Hi, Tristan here. I'm going to showcase the quest system I've been working on for Molyur RS. So here we go. This is what your Legends quest um, journal looked like. So, quick comparison. Now we've got your journal. A huge shout out to Colton for designing the background for the, um, the new background for the journal and the quest list. This journal is based on the um, the Legends Quest system journal. That's kind of the basis that I use. This um, I put in all my own text and info, and configured it to my own script. So, um, you know, credits to Legends for this. But the idea was um, the idea with me developing this quest system was that Legends Quest wasn't really compatible with the RuneScape playstyle. You you couldn't use the same NPC more than once. And um well there were just a lot more limitations than we could handle, so I went ahead and I um took this from, you know, post release content, I made it priority and I got it got got stuff done. So um here's kind of how I base this on is when you're in RuneScape and you click on a quest, it'll pull up um, all of the info on that quest. That um, you've got the same thing here is you pull up your journal, pressing J. Hang on. Yeah, so you press J and it'll pull up your journal just like in RuneScape. And I put in my own quest points counter, coded that in, put in. Um, an additional thing that'll show you how many quests you have active. I mean, how many are available and how many are completed. And um, another thing, um, I think this is the best way to do it, but I wanted to show difficulty, so I decided I, I'd color code it so you could easily look and see what how hard a quest is going to be for all those new players that don't know about well vampire slayer and you know you're gonna get knocked around a little bit so that's pretty much all the journal stuff um this let me show you about this um i wanted to show that i wanted to show a way to show that a quest is available or um if it's completed at a glance so i added this green symbol from runescape You'll notice that here is this guy. He's going to show you if a quest is available. And then if a quest is completed, let's see if I find one. Imp catcher is completed. So you get you get um kind of an idea of what's available and what's completed at a glance. That's what I was going for. And going into the game, let's go ahead and start a quest here. Which one are we going to do? Dork's Quest. That's, that one's pretty good. So It's simple and to the point. So where's Dork? Ignore the bot army. <laughs> These are all just test um, NPCs. Just to test the conversations. I promise it'll be a lot more involved when you get in the game. So the first thing you'll notice here is... Um, pop-up panels. These came from the um, Legends Quest system. I didn't I didn't develop any of the actual GUI. I just utilized it um, with my own script to populate it with text and um, well track using my own um, well quest tracking system which Legends was kind of weird. It, the way Legends worked was, okay, let's see, it would kind of do like, um, so it would go from like NPC, it would go from like NPC, um, that's where it would pull its information, and then it would go to like, what would it do? It would do quest ID, and then player step. And that's all um, unique to the NPC. I don't know why he did it like this, but that way you have to like to actually track the information and have these 
GUI things pop up and will actually know what you can do um, from the on the um, development side you had to do it based on the NPC first and then the quest ID and then the player step and that information wasn't like easy to get at all um, so what you've seen in the past was pretty much a brute force method um, with well, kind of um, a nice, it was a nice system, but it wasn't compatible with what we want. So then you would get your info. But what I did was um, I took um, the persistence, which um, is save data. So I took the save data that um, the way Legends quest system saved everything and I made my own so kind of got my own persistence and what I did with that was I used it in a way that Neverwinter Nights suited it so you have tracking step one step two and so on and then um that way you can track each step of the quest instead of tracking the NPC and well the problem with legends was you couldn't use an NPC more than once so if you try to go from NPC 2 and then back to NPC 1 is like finish well you just couldn't do that but with this um, any NPC could track step 1 and step two and step X and then um, finish would just be like step 999 because you would never get there so if I ever want to check 999 that means you finish the quest so that's kind of um, this is just like a much more compatible way of tracking the data and that's the that's the um, the first step I did in transferring this quest system was making it persistent. So back to the actual content, what you guys want to see. I'll kind of go back and forth for, um, well, kind of behind the scenes stuff because that, you might find that interesting. If you like code, if you're a programmer, I'll, um, I'll like try to do the best I could for that. So we just started Dork's Quest the first thing you would notice is I never clicked Dork's Quest. I um, coded in a way that um, once you interact with a quest it's going to automatically go um, to that quest in your journal and select it so you could see the information. The reason I did that was every time you open your journal it's going to um, it's going to refresh everything which means it's got to clear everything out and then go back to um, well you won't have anything selected so I kind of made it auto select so like you start witch's potion you'll see that again so it goes to witch's potion but we're doing dork's quest so let's see what um, oh I should show you um, I should explain this these are going to be your quest objectives those will be color coded in yellow and they'll show like what items you need to obtain, what monsters you need to kill, um, what else. So, as you let's see, I need to collect six lumps of clay, four copper, and two iron ores. Make it really simple and just you know use the easy button. So now we've got everything. You see those objectives just march over to done. So. Now, once we talk to Doric, well, I guess let's let's show you how that that works. So now that I, oh, I guess I had copper. But now that I'm one short clay, Doric's not gonna want to talk to me. He's gonna say, "Go get this stuff." So I can pull these pop-ups straight off. Um, or I could um, use a convo if I want. The the point of this is 
I wanted to make this really flexible to where the um, pop-up things aren't actually required, so that leaves more room for us to make our own, um, you know, future, to make our own future um, modifications to this. So now that I'm done, I can go ahead and turn in my quest. And the last thing I need to show you, um, as far as panels go, is the finish panel. This will, um, well, you could choose not to finish your quest. If you, if you remember in RuneScape, sometimes you would talk to the NPC by accident, be forced to finish it. Well, now you could just say later, and that's one of the cool features from the, the Legends panels. Um, um, as far as content, you've got you got your lovely quest ribbon that'll show complete. And that came from um that came from old school RuneScape. Um you've got how many quest points you've you're earning on this quest. You've got um your rewards, those are color coded. So it's gonna be like um I think I've got a picture of like the color code on rewards. So oh well I guess we'll just step back a few ways and show you. So this is kind of how it's going to be. Green is novice, yellow is intermediate, orange is hard, um, red is, I think, um, oh, orange is experienced, red is um, master, and then purple is going to be grandmaster. So that's kind of how those are color coded. But yeah, so are rewards. They're also color coded. So if you look at my inventory, I've got no gold. Now I've got 180 gold. And he took my he took my items that I brought him. So that's um that's a fully functioning quest system. I'm surprised this all um well it pretty much all went over um clean and flawlessly the first time. That never happens with Neverwinter Nights 2. Never. But um, it happened today. So, <laughs> lucky. What do we want to do now? Ah, I know what we want to do. We want to look at the next feature. Interacting with placeables. I didn't show that already. Um... If you click on a placeable, it'll show you, um, well, an examine text, if it's a quest placeable. And um, if you're on the quest, like, let's do Restless Ghost. So I'm on Restless Ghost, so I'm going to interact with the placeable here pretty soon. Communicate with Ghost. So I need my amulet. And he wants me to find his missing skull. So that's where placeable interaction comes in. I'm going to click these skulls. And what you're going to see here is um, an animation and probably an objective update. Well, that was lame, but I got the skull. So I guess you'll see that um, here if it does the animation right. I kind of bumped into the table. I think that's why. But there you go. You get your um, updated text, and he does like the placing animation. So now I've got to speak to the ghost and finish the quest. get my XP and there we go quest completed so um, that's about all the features that um, I can show you right now except um well I could show you tutorial island has a step-by-step -step objective system that's a little buggy because um well when I transfer the code that didn't go over fully there's something um I have to fix with it, but you'll see when you play Tutorial Island. Don't worry, you'll see it. 
And that's all I've got for the quest system, so. Thanks for watching, guys. And bye. Later on. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Two birds in a bush. Ice cream man gets the rest. Stay thirsty, my friends. Two birds in a bush. Ice cream man gets the rest. Stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty. All right, time for some behind the scenes action. This is um I'm going to walk you through um well <laughs> let's tour my scripts. <laughs> if if you're bored to death, um skip to the end of video where I I clap my hands and say um bye guys or something, but um I think scripts are interesting. So let's go into it. We've got um I'm going to just showcase my central scripts because, well, there's a whole um, laundry list of things that will tie back to these, so these will probably be the most interesting. And I hope this is, so on we go. So this is the most important script in the new quest system, is the, the quest book. That is going to um, store all the tags of every quest that you would use in the convos that all the other scripts use. Um, they basically, these tags identify your quest. And they're all stored in that um, quest book string. Which you can see down here is um, see functions I made for pulling data. This is um well the first function that'll that'll set it up. It'll um add everything into your quest book as an array using using legends, shout out to Marshall. So um the ah, run quest book is um used in most of my scripts. That'll pull um that'll pull all the information. It'll run a job that'll pull information, um from this script using the tag. So let's look at one of those jobs. Um, let's use Finder to just jump right to it. So this is one of the um, the job functions that I made. And that's going to assign your quest tag. It will assign your title, set difficulty, and um, based on whatever step you pass it, like Remember what I said earlier in the video was that we're doing this by steps. We're not using MTC, quest ID, blah, blah, just whatever. We're going to use steps because it makes sense. It's step 1, 2, 3, etc. So you got finish is 99. And that shows you, um, that'll assign whatever text to your journal. These are all, um, now... Let me find a quest include. So these are all stored in um well a variable script that'll that's um kind of shared between different scripts. So if they're all like ran by the same like instance, then they'll all share the same variables. So that's that's the idea here is that you'll assign the text and then that will be pullable from your um well journal so so yeah so that's kind of what you've got you've got your switch statement that'll um kind of like search for which step you're on and then assign the data so you've got your objectives part we'll look at all that in a second You've got your objectives, and well, this is the part that I couldn't show Tutorial Island for was because something went wrong with this guy. Um, he's not pulling up the the um, pop-up info boxes that'll tell you info about what you're doing. 
so I didn't really want to show something that's that broken. But I mean, it works in standalone, so so I it shouldn't be that hard to fix. Now moving on, we've got the journal switch. If you look here, this is um where it's actually um sending that info to the GUI. So you know wherever it ran the um, yeah, so it sets the quest book up first, and then well, it ran all of your quests, and so now all the information is set up for this script to send that all to the well GUI journal panel, which you see right here. Oh, it's nighttime. But um, that's pretty much what this script does. You see, it adds some. Um, it has to do this each time you like click this button or press J. It has to like clear all of these panels and then shoot them all back out. So that's one thing is because when you press J, all of your information is gone. So you press J again. This is the script that's putting it back in. And um. Moving on a little further, we've got the quest GUI. This is what I'm pulling out from all the convos. So after you talk to an NPC and he says, "Hey, help me! I'm I'm in distress." This um script is kind of where I am. It's kind of where I tell the conversation what GUI panel I'm putting out, and that's usually going to be tracked by the steps the player steps here good minus two meaning the offer and then minus one meaning finish so that's what you kind of see here is checking that out because all the offers are going to be like I wanted to be able to count like the continue boxes like um, when you talk to an NPC after you start the quest your first continue would be your first player step. So, so yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to do there. And then this, just like you saw in the um, journal switch, that's shooting all this information out to your um, pop-up panels after you talk to NPCs. Like, um, so. Like this one, this is a pop-up panel. So this script is shooting all the information out that, well, your NPC wants to tell you. So yeah, you got that. And um, another thing with um, Neverwinter Nights 2, so this is how you have a GUI. Um, this is how you kind of do GUI buttons. So anything called, any script called from a GUI, like this is GUI quest journal detail. So once I click, um, once I click one of these boxes, this is the script that runs to um, pull in all the data and highlight this box to um, Make sure all things are squared away so you're actually reading the correct info and not like just getting some blank section. So um, that's all being set up here. It'll um, change your title and everything, it'll change your text, your quest requirements, difficulty, um, icons, every, every which way going to do that from this GUI script. So you've got um, more GUI scripts it's like the accept GUI, you've got your um, finish GUI, you get the idea. Now another thing with the finish GUI, I included an extra script called quest progress because um, well we've got, let's see where we've got that. I almost forget what these things do sometimes. So I'll see it. Um, ah, quest progress. 
Ah, so this is what I wanted to do. Is, um, display an info box. Quest updated. Your your quest. And I'll play your nice ringy sound I got back from Legends. <laughs> and um, finish quest is actually doing all the setting you to like the completed step and playing your sounds. So these are the persistent scripts. I kind of um. I got I got a little fancy with the persistence because um well let me try to explain persistence a little bit the um the game the when we were in standalone when we didn't have a server it was kind of easy to do variables and um um every case the the variables could be stored on the player but um once we transferred to the server we realized the variables that you need to pull for everything for your skills for your um quest for all of that all of that is wiped from your player when the server resets so what marshall um did was he he developed some kind of persistent system um where you could where his scripts actually set um variables on the campaign unique to your player so the the overall server is um storing your player's information using persistence now that is a little taxing so i had to um i had to kind of like mix that in with the local cuz the local isn't taxing at all but once you use Marshall's persistent stuff, you don't want to be firing those things more than well um more than your fair share every every minute or else you're gonna lag the whole server because you're sending packages back and forth to the um to the database so the reason I made my own persistent script was I've run out of scripts to show, so let me go into the this is the actual Gilinor mod. I was showing you the standalone before, so here we go. TB persistence. So what I do is, um, if I'm getting a persistent, I offer the option in in script to use the the local one first before you use the um, Legends persistent one. So that's that's what I'm getting at there is, um. That means if if you're um so if you want to get a variable and your variable is zero, it'll check your um if you're using local, it'll check your local first and then it'll check the legends one if it's if it's zero. So you got the same thing an empty string. This is um this is a really creative way, but um, setting setting was unavoidable because you you kind of have to like if you're going to set a variable, you might as well set it persistent. So you're just going to have to not set things that often. That wasn't much of a problem in the um, convos. Like let's look at well, Osman. So these are like conversations for your NPC. Um, you see my scripts here to get persistence and set persistence. Um, the first thing you'll notice is you have to use get persistent a lot more than you use set persistence, which is there. So, I believe this was a really good way to, um, you know, keep the quests um, from, you know, lagging the game because of legends I did the same thing with skills which um I guess I'll showcase that too since um we still have time I mean I'm not going to bed yet it's really late re um here but let's look at my skills my skills code so these are just like IDs but um 
When you update a level, there should be something down here. Mm. Mm. I don't know. This thing's long. Where is it? Ah! Aha! Uh -huh. So this is what I was looking for. Save database. That's another script I wrote. Um, I wrote that in TB database. And what that does is since um, saving um, persistent variables is so taxing to the server, um, I made it so that a player can only save to the database every 10 minutes, which is, well, 600 seconds. So once you save, it's going to, um, once you save here, it's going to set that locally. It's going to set your time, your current game time. And after 600 seconds on the, um, on the whole game, on the mod, that's not tracked locally, that's tracked on the mod. After 600 seconds, then you could save again. So that way, um, we could have, say, a thousand, two hundred players all doing skills at the same time, and it would only lag the game, like, um, a second for that many players, because you're only saving once every ten minutes. And then you're locked out. But, um, I kept in mind that, well, once you do, like, some really important things, like you complete a quest, what if you're locked out and you complete a quest? Well, then if the server resets, you've just lost all your skill points from um, completing that quest. So I added this, um, this um, option is a force save. If that's set to 1 when you're calling this, it's going to um it's going to skip all this um well time tracking stuff and go ahead and save for you so um you complete your quest you get that instantly and then it'll lock you out again for another 600 seconds so this is um a really complex system if you if you get at it but at the same time, it's it's pretty simple once you get past all the math stuff. I had to use Legend's timestamp and figure out how that worked because that was freaking complicated. I didn't know anything about, like, well, it's strange because that only had, like, every five seconds. It would count once. So I had to, like, do the timestamp divided by five for checking that, but... That's how pretty much the database works, and um, so there we go, we've got all that taken care of. So that's all I wanted to show you guys with Quest, and thanks for